Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Sheena and I'm a digital content creator and Etsy shop owner based out of New York City. So as you guys can tell by the title, we'll be covering my top tips on opening a successful Etsy shop. So without further ado, let's jump in. We'll be including all names and costs so that I can be completely transparent with you guys. And I'll also be sure to link all products below so you can go ahead and click through and find what works for you. If I can't find the exact product that I purchased, I will try to find something fairly similar. So first thing, if you don't do anything else, get yourself a P.O. box. The first reason is because it's just not professional. You should not have your personal apartment number or your personal home address on shipping that you're sending to people's homes or businesses. The second thing is, I'm sure the most obvious, is that it is extremely dangerous. You don't know what you're dealing with out here on the internet and to put your personal address on an envelope and send it to someone and put that information out in the interwebs is just dangerous. Whether you have five subscribers or 500,000, you just never want to take that chance. So just be careful, never use your personal address. Now, when it comes to PO boxes, you can usually get one from your local local you know United States post office or you can get one from like a small shipping center or a UPS or a FedEx. I decided to do my PO box with UPS and that cost was about 120 bucks for four months. So that cost is split up over all the months, but you pay all that money up front and it secures you a box. Now how big your PO box is varies and you can choose that size. I decided to go with a medium sized PO box because I had subscribers and companies sending me items and I wanted to make sure I had enough space in my PO box to fit those shipments. So again, it's an annoying expense. Most of us don't want to deal with it, but if you spend money on anything when it comes to your brand or your shop, get a legit PO box. All right, guys, so my second tip is to figure out your drawing medium. So how are you going to produce this artwork to turn to stickers to in turn put into your Etsy store? Now, if you guys have watched a few of my videos and maybe even other illustrators here on YouTube, most of them use iPads or Procreate or some type of digital format like that because it's just easier. And it doesn't mean that you have to go out here and buy a thousand dollar iPad Pro. It is not that serious, but if you want to, I do think it is an amazing tool. And I personally use an iPad Pro 12.9 inch with an Apple Pencil and the Procreate program, which is about 20 bucks. Now I've also seen a few artists use Photoshop and they'll use um, what they call a Wacom or Wacom type tablet and they'll draw on that and then upload the work and so that's another form but if you're on a super tight budget and you still want to create artwork just go back to what you know go back to your pencils and paper and paint and watercolors and whatever tools help you to create art draft up your own artwork wait for it to dry and then just upload it into your machine and turn it into stickers anyway. So it just depends on what your budget is, but there are so many different ways to actually draw stickers and create them. So the cost can range from like five bucks with a piece of paper and some markers you already have all the way up to like $1,200. If you want to buy that iPad or that tablet or that Wacom, it's going to cost you a little bit of extra money, but it just depends. Okay, now my third tip or tool is a cutting machine. I have seen people go at it with scissors and you know what more power to you use the scissors it's all good but for me the amount of product that I was looking to produce I personally don't have time to sit down with scissors and perfectly cut every sticker it would literally take me days on end to fulfill orders especially when I first launched my shop I want to say I probably got around 70 orders in the matter of two days and you can imagine cutting every individual order some people even ordered duplicates so I personally don't think that's the best idea if you plan on scaling your business I recommend just saving the money and getting a cutting machine but if you're just starting out and you don't have the budget just get some good craft scissors and get to work maybe ask your significant other or your roommate to help you out it is definitely still possible but when it comes to me I didn't even put that into consideration. I went straight for a cutting machine. Now, I personally use a Cricut, and it's a Cricut Explore Air 2, so it's a newer model. And what I love about it the most is that it has a Bluetooth feature, which I think most cutting machines do nowadays, which means that you can set it in a different room. You can set it on a bookshelf, maybe somewhere hidden because you don't want it out, but it just allows you to be separated from your desk space and not have to be fully connected to the computer, which I 
I love. Now, when it comes to these cutting machines, I'm not a cutting machine connoisseur. The only two that I know about are the Cricut, which I use, and then the Silhouette Cameo, which I've also heard great things about. Again, it's about preference and budget. Buy what you wanna buy, the Cricut just works for me. I've already invested in the mats and the cutting tools, and so I'll probably have it for a little while until maybe my shop grows a bit more. And when it comes to cost, you'll be looking at roughly 200 bucks to get one of these machines. Now, I was one of those people that definitely waited for Black Friday and I looked around Amazon and I was actually able to get my Cricut for a good price. It was actually quite a steal. So if you're one of those people who is willing to maybe cut with scissors and wait for a good deal on a Cricut, I'd recommend doing that. But otherwise, that's the setup that I use. But again, it can go from $5, a simple pair of scissors, all the way up to 200 plus for a really fancy cutting machine. Do what works for you and your budget. Okay, and tip number four is sticker paper. And I get this question all the time. And sometimes I'm like, oh, no problem. Here's what I use. And then there are other times that I'm like, are people just not researching out here? Because there are so many different types of sticker paper. You just have to put the work in and do trial and error and test. And that's where a lot of people don't want to do, which I understand because you don't want to waste money but looking at the sticker paper that someone else uses with a completely different printer completely different drawing tools is not going to help you so why I may say like I use sticker paper a it may not come out the same for you because you use a different printer maybe your drawing style is different maybe you use different textiles than i do it can be completely different so be wary just buying any printer paper that you see an influencer or someone on youtube using because it may not work for you i mentioned this in a vlogmas video but the printer paper i use is a cricut paper only because they had a black friday sale and so that paper normally runs about 10 bucks a pack and you only get 10 sheets which is insane because you're paying about a dollar a page which is quite expensive so if you do the math in your head you can imagine how much you're going to have to charge the end user to recoup the money that you've paid for that paper. So I got them for like half the cost. So I bought like a stack of them and I've been running through that. So when those are done, then I'm gonna choose a different paper brand, but that's what I've personally been using. And at the end of the day, the quality is amazing. and I know that it works, so that's why I'm happy with it. But if you're looking for options, there are so many different places you can get paper. Again, it's all about researching and just finding out what works best for you and your budget. Now, overall, I would say if you're trying to start an Etsy shop and you plan on doing this for a while, just buy wholesale. And all that means is buy a ton of paper, maybe like 200 sheets because you get a big discount, a big cut if you do that. So you could look at maybe 50 sheets and it will cost 50 cents a sheet. But then the higher you go up into the wholesale, maybe you say instead of 50, I'll buy 200. The cost could go down to like maybe 30 cents a sheet or a little bit more. So just go onto these websites and toggle through the menus and find out where the sweet spot is that cuts you the best deal and also gets you a ton of paper. So if you're in Europe, check out Evergreen. Otherwise, all the paper that I've tested and found even for my thank you stickers, I just found on Amazon. And I bought maybe like a 20 pack or 15 and I tested it. And if I liked it, then I considered buying more. Like that's how it works. So I would say scour Amazon. I'll try to put some recommendations below. And then I got a question about like, what's the worst paper that I've used? And I would have to say it's the Avery label paper. I'm sorry guys, it's crap paper. I know that, you know, a lot of us are trying to save money, but do not go with the Avery just to save money. Those labels in particular are made to put on posted stamps, not to print stickers. So just be wary using that Avery brand. I didn't have a good experience. All right guys, tip number five is the printer. Of course, you cannot have a sticker shop and you're not able to print. So when it comes to a printer, there are so many different models. So I'm not gonna sit here and recommend them. I'm just gonna basically go through the differences and then you can use that in your cognitive reasoning to buy what's right for you. So basically there are two different types of printer types out here in the consumer market, which are laser printers and inkjets. And the main difference, thank you to my significant other for helping me out with this because he used to be in the printer market. The difference between the two is just how it distributes ink. Laser is going to basically not disperse ink onto the paper, but almost like making a polymer coating, which means no rubbing off and really good quality so you're not getting the smearing. But the cons of having a laser printer is 
the hardware and the ink can be very, very expensive. So you're kind of paying a lot of money up front, but you're getting better quality and more longevity. So you have to figure out that works for you. Most people in the sticker community or Etsy community tend to use ink jets and it's usually because they're more accessible, they're cheaper, and the ink is usually cheaper. However, you can run through a shit ton of ink using an ink jet. So just be careful if you're printing super saturated images or maybe like full prints you have to be careful with that you will run through ink like no other um, and when it comes to that I just recommend buying um, third party or off brand or signing up for an ink um, subscription service because it always ends up being cheaper so again laser printers are just more expensive but they last longer and they produce better quality ink jets are cheaper and more accessible but in the long term you're probably going to end up spending more money on the ink and just getting it maintained over time and when it comes to cost a decent printer to get the job done is going to run you about 150 bucks i personally would not go with any of these 50 or 70 dollar printers if you plan on selling product to people and getting top quality Again, just save your coins and get a good entry level printer. So when it comes to my printer setup, I personally use an inkjet that's made by HP and I've had it for quite a few years. I think it's a decent printer. When I bought it, it was around 180 bucks and it gets the job done. Is it my favorite printer? No, but those things take time. As you make more sales, as you scale your company, you can buy better equipment, but this one is definitely good enough to get the job done and it does produce great quality. So I'll try to link that below. Otherwise, you can buy any printer on the market. All right, guys, so number six, packaging supplies. And I have seen so many people on YouTube doing super cute packaging and adding all these extra like glitz and glamor and glitter and all these things. At the end of the day, if you start to do the math in your head, you realize that the packaging um, prettiness they're putting into it is actually costing them more money in the long run. You have to be really cognizant of how much money you're putting into the shipping because that's eating into your profit. So if you're selling your stickers for maybe $5 a sticker, but then your shipping is costing you nearly $2 because you have the cutest envelopes and glitter and you know little packaging stickers, those are going to cost you and now you're getting less money on the back end. So just be careful with that. Not saying your packaging shouldn't be pretty, and you shouldn't put your own personality into it, but be wary of how much it's costing you per shipment. Now, let's talk two things, cost and protection. It doesn't matter how pretty your envelopes may look or you know if you put little glitter inserts in, none of that matters if the package is damaged before it gets to the customer. And I'm sure you guys have ordered product online and received a box and it was like torn to shit. And you're like, what is this? Imagine what your little flat mailer or your envelope is going through, especially when it goes overseas. So when it comes to the packaging, I say go more for the reinforcement and less for it just being pretty. So for me, I use rigid mailers. They're basically envelopes that are very thick, which make it almost impossible to bend. So I don't really include the do not bend sticker because I don't think a person could physically bend that without breaking like the cardboard that it's made out of. So I like the rigid mailers. Um, I buy mine from Mailers USA, which I will link below, and I just bought them wholesale. So I bought a ton of them. I store them in my living room, and I have enough to last me well over a year. I've definitely seen quite a few people um, just do basic like cardstock envelopes, and then they'll put a um, piece of cardboard or some type of thick mailer inside to protect the artwork from being bent or rolled and that's perfectly fine but for me I'm like why would I buy two different products to do what this one product does like that was my reasoning will I change the setup one day possibly but this works for me and I'm able to ship it just as a flat mailer and not pay any extra fees for it now, at the end of the day, these rigid flat mailers or envelopes, they are still made out of paper. So if they encounter any type of water, your product will definitely be soaked from the inside out. So I would recommend also including some type of protection like a cello bag. While I don't like using plastic, I don't condone and just buying a ton of plastic. For me, if my customer is paying for a premium product and I'm promising to get it to them in good shape, the extra investment is worth it to have that cello bag. It's just a little plastic bag that you can slide your product into and seal it. So if your envelope does get drenched, which it does happen, your customer can still open their package and their stickers are 
untouched. Beyond the cello bag and the rigid mailer or envelope, the things that keep it protected and allow you to ship it, you can also throw in little cute add-ons, like maybe a little heart cutout or a thank you sticker or a business card. All those little inserts are totally up to you, but just always, always be cognizant of how much money you're spending to add all these freebies and add-ons. In my package, I always include a contact sticker that has like my Etsy, um, my email address, my Instagram, just another way for people to stay in contact with me. And then I always include a freebie and I've done a freebie videos. So I'll link it so you guys can check it out, but it costs me little to nothing. And it's a nice little surprise for all of my customers that have chosen to shop with me. So that's my little setup. It's very, very inexpensive. It's simple and it's something that I can reproduce over and over again until I'm just tired of it. Now, when it comes to cost on my shipping supplies, I probably spent around 60 bucks and I ordered bulk um, in those rigid mailers from Mailers USA. And I probably got like a hundred plus if I can remember i want to say it was definitely over a hundred and i just store them in my living room i don't have to look at them and they'll last me well over a year number seven is finding a shipping platform or solution so once you've gotten these amazing stickers created you put your little tissue paper in and your thank you sticker you got it all nice and pretty and packaged up how are you going to get it to the customer when it comes to these shipping solutions it's all based on what you have locally in your area what you can afford what your workflow looks like um, I think the most common workflow that I see on YouTube, especially in studio vlogs, is like, I'm going to take my tote and walk to the post office. And I want to say I'm probably the only creator who doesn't do that um, because I personally hate the post office. I hate the post office. I feel like it's a waste of time. You're always standing in super duper long lines and knowing my luck, every time I approach the counter, I'm getting a different response from a different person, which to me just leads to inconsistency, which I don't like. If I'm paying a cost, I wanna pay that flat cost all the time. If I'm dropping off, 20 packages and it's okay that should be okay every day of the week not one day when there's a nice clerk there so i personally don't deal with the in-person drop-offs i will drop it downstairs because my building offers a mailbox for tenants so i just drop my mail in there or if i'm passing by like a mailbox on the street because it is new york I'll just drop one in there, but I never go to the post office to drop packages. So now you're probably wondering, well, Sheena, if everyone else is walking to the post office, how do you avoid that? And it's having a digital interface for your shipping labels. Now, is that going to cost you money? Of course it is, but to me, that is more convenient. So if I have a day where I am packing like 10 orders up, I can just work from my apartment, print my label, slap them on and get them shipped out. So I'm going to break down the two different types of shipping methods you can do based on where you live, your budget and all of that. Now the method that I use is again, shipping from an online platform. And I'll just list out a few of them for you guys here. You can use ShipStation, you can use stamps.com, the USPS website, straight from your Etsy dashboard or using Pitney and Bose, which is not one that I've heard of or used quite often, but Dustin mentioned it, so I figured I'd put it in here. Now, when it comes to these shipping services, excluding Etsy because that's built into their platform, you normally have to pay a monthly membership to use their platform and to print off your postage, which is not a big deal for me. But if you go with one of these carriers, you're looking at somewhere between $15 all the way up to $30 a month, depending on what services you're using from them. And that does not include the actual stamps that you print. So just be mindful of how much money you're spending on this. But for me, it's totally worth it to just do it from home. Now, if you're someone that has to walk to your local post office and drop off packages, then you're probably gonna go with the setup that I think like catnip and a lot of other people use for their Etsy shops, which is just printing address labels and then going to the post office to get physical stamps. But the method I I use is just printing directly from USPS and getting that postage label. And I would say the other caveat of having an at-home solution is you also have to make sure you have all the hardware. So you gotta have the printer to print the labels. I personally use the Dymo 4XL. And then you also have to have a scale, a postage scale to weigh your packages so that the label prints out the correct weight. So I have both of those items and I do use them from my office. And now it's gotten to a point where I have such a system down that it is 
so easy for me to just get labels on packages and get them out to you guys as soon as possible. All right guys, and the next tip or tool that you'll need to get your shop running is to have a camera of some sort. Now when it comes to my product photos, I take them all with the camera that I'm actually recording with right now, which is my Canon mirrorless camera. It's an M50. Now off the bat, I'm gonna say you do not need this camera. You do not. But I'm actually someone who is into film. I do content creation. I'm a videographer. So this was the right way for me to go. And this camera cost me about 750, like in a full package with a mic and a stand and all of that. But again, you don't need that. Use your mobile device. Every single one of us has a phone, a smartphone. You're probably watching me on your smartphone and that very phone you have in your hand can take all of your Etsy product photos with no problem. I don't care what anyone says, you do not need a super fancy camera to take Etsy pictures. Your biggest thing is having decent lighting. So as you see me sitting here doing this video, I have no studio lights, no umbrella lights. I am literally just sitting in front of a window on a bright day and that's all you need. Now will your lighting always be consistent? No, because you're at the mercy of mother nature and sunlight but if you don't have the funds to go out and buy studio lights and all these extra backdrops start small start simple use your phone lay it on a nice surface maybe white sheets or go out and buy poster board and take these pictures with the tools that you have. Now, if you guys wanna see a full video on how I do photo shoots for my products and everything that I use, let me know below. Really, with that tool, you should already have it, so it should cost you no money to just use your phone or use the camera that you already have. There is always a way, but is super duper important to take really good quality pictures so all this time you put into your product can show through those pictures. So that's about it, you guys. The reason that I say launching a successful Etsy shop is because you can buy all of these products or buy none of these products and still not be successful. The way that I personally identify success with Etsy is buying whatever you have to buy to run the shop making sales that pay you back for all of the products that you bought and then also give you some profit on top. So just to be fully transparent, when it comes down to my overall cost to get my shop up and running, it took me about 700 bucks. And that's not including the iPad or my camera because I already had these items and I needed them for my other freelance business. But when it comes to specific products for Etsy, I've spent about 700 bucks just from refilling ink to buying new supplies the Cricut, whatever I may have needed. And when it comes to my sales, they have surpassed $700. So that means that I have made a profit or I have at least cut even. And so that's how I measure success. If you guys have any questions, definitely list them below and I will try to answer them as I can. But when it comes to your shop, just do what you can do with what you have. Don't kill yourself spending all this money on product, especially if you don't have an audience to quickly buy up all of your product to recoup your cost. Just be very cognizant of these things because having an Etsy shop and not making any profit is just having a hobby. That's it guys, thank you so much for your support. If you have not checked out my Etsy shop, I will have it linked above, below, and also in the end card at the end of this video. I'm adding new product basically every two Two weeks so be sure to check out the shop and follow it to stay up to date with my products so i really hope these tips were useful this is your girl signing off and i'll see you guys in the next one bye